talking why you never said you felt that way and guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until i look away but i've known you too long it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray as you fade away Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Gotta build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace I never really asked to be brought into this place You wanna love me? Well then baby, I have a taste All the highs and the lows no, you'll never be the same I don't really wanna hurt you But I can't control the pain If you're sticking by my side Maybe we could be okay Okay, okay Maybe you could be the change I need today I promise that I've never fell this way I really hope that you Will choose to stay Through all the pain I know you told your friend You're not okay And tell me what's wrong And why you never said You felt that way all right guys plainfield indiana sports card show three and a half hour drive chad thank you for inviting me to set up and use the other table and driving two and a half hours each way off that leg i appreciate it i was tired i was beat uh very very good show dealers getting her at eight <laughs> show opens up at 8 30 she gotta be hustling and get your stuff set up uh, let's see here. Lots to review on to, so I'll be looking down to catch some of my notes here and everything. I already had sales, like, at 8.30. It was crazy. Um, everybody just came through there, liked finding the odd stuff you don't see everywhere. Easiest way to say it. If they've never seen the card or they've only caught glimpses here and there of it, people wanted it. Shoeless Joe Jackson Relic, gone. Quick. Um, four horsemen card I had from uh, 54 scoops gone quick all that stuff so what I'm seeing up there the traffic was heavy from 8 30 to about 12 30 1 o'clock then everything died down show stuff it was uh, done at two but we also had playoff football going on and everything else out there but the the crowd was there people it was all fresh weren't people recircling around I'm guessing maybe probably off 40 tables something like that up there Guy runs the show, runs it very well, promotes it very well. Those videos of people's stuff before uh, come on, come in there and everything like that. He took a look at my stuff and was like, wow, that's some cool stuff, you know. And I was like, yeah, I tried to bring different stuff. Thanks to Cora out there because he gave me a little inside scoop of what to bring and what not to bring with me. A lot of my stuff was already out. I sent the PSA and everything. And this was on the spur of the moment card show set up for me. Uh, a lot of vintage. I don't know if I found, if I got video of the Clemente rookies and stuff they was. It was before this and all that. But very, very good show. He does a very good shot, uh, job with it because I believe he said it's six tables and he keeps open every show and he rotates dealers. So there's always fresh dealers. And you have to basically get put on a list in order to get a table every month. By far, people are no stranger spending money there. By far, they had some nice stuff. I didn't pick up a lot, but we're going to talk about everything I did get. Made a good bit of sales up there. Inventory depleted for whatnot. So hopefully this other package makes it here before this weekend. Otherwise, I'm going to have to go splurge somewhere. And I hate when I have to get more forced to buy in bulk lots. It just, it just always turns out bad for me. So um, hope this other package, I know he said he was going to put together on Tuesday, which is tomorrow for me and everything. So it'll come in and we'll use most, some of that stuff or whatnot. All right. If I can get this to show up, there we go. So first they got a young gentleman come by, wanted some card money for the show and stuff to buy, which I bought. I picked a Wander Franco by two up stadium club rookie. They're like two, three bucks a card. And then a Julio Rodriguez. I think we averaged this out like five, six, seven bucks, somewhere around there. Then he threw in Raleigh Fingers. There we go. Auto on card. 
Hall of Famer, Raleigh Fingers, Mustache Man. All right. So that was one little deal. Walked around uh, right around lunchtime. Oh, by the way, if you do go up to the Plainfield, Indiana show, they serve food up there at lunchtime. It was really good. It was at a place, uh, the Order of the Fraternary, Fraternal Eagles. There we go. Tongue twister being tired. But um, really good food. Really good food. So if you guys ever get a chance, stop up there and take a look at it. I mean, it, it was good. Well worth the show. Um, I don't usually say that very often with a lot of shows I go to. It was very well worth it, but very well. Like I said, good promoting, good crowd, good everything all around. I only had like two dudes try to come up and like do the what's the lowest you'll take on this. But most of the people were like that I dealt with were like ages, I'd say 30 and up. There were some people under 30 that were very polite, very respectful. Unlike the other shows that I've set up at down Louisville, Lexington, and even Newburgh, Indiana. Totally different. Very happy. Thank you if you guys are watching this. You guys are respectful coming up and saying, hey, um, would you take this and make an offer on to it? Negotiate instead of saying what's the lowest you'll do or what's the best you could do. All that crud out there. Okay, moving on. Next lot. Found this in the far back. Michael Thomas, and I believe this is rookie patch auto, but there's no rookie card on. I have to double check. I can't remember when Michael Thomas came out. Guys, in the comments, somebody put it on there because I'll probably forget. And then I'll see a comment be like, oh crap, I was supposed to look this up. But anyhow, it's out of 99. Can't remember, there's no rookie card. Load. Maybe it's not a rookie. Maybe it's like third or fourth year. But see, there's no stats in the back. That's what threw it off for me. But pretty cool, 2017. There was a lot of Saints people out there. Pick this up. We don't know where Aaron's going to be going. This is the on-campus, kind of like the college um, downtown in a way. Looked pretty good. I might send off to be great and might just trade it off. But we'll see where he ends up going. Picked it up, both of those up. Relatively cheap once we uh, agreed on what the value of the cards were because he was off on sticker prices. So good deal, good deal. I appreciate people like that. You know, hey, if I'm off my stickers, let me know. I did. I said, this is what I'm finding. You know, where I, where we're at, where can you go? You know, this is where I'm at on it. We went right from there. There was no back and forth. He gave me a price after I told him where his stickers were. And I, I was happy. This is the car I want to talk about. So, before I show it, I don't even know. I, might, I better not use the thumbnail. This for my video. I think only Cora and a few people on Discord know I got this. So everybody remembers I have that Halliburton T-Mall Gold Wave rookie. It was like a hundred dollar card, PSA nine, not numbered, nothing like that. It was the uh, T-Mall version. So going through and everything onto it, I end up uh, having somebody come up and they're like, "Hey, would you trade for that card?" I said, "Yeah, let me see what you got." He had some um, immaculate basketball, and I, I'm not down with all the new prospects. I kind of backed away from Bowman the last two to three years because it's just crazy prices, right? To invest in a prospect that may never make it up there. I don't care if you're drafted number one or you're drafted number 87. So everybody will know this guy. Ellie De La Cruz comes up. He said, you trade this to me. He, and I said, hey, what's it worth? He said like a hundred bucks. I'm like, okay. I figured maybe it was. I had no idea. He said Dude, they based it off of Tyler Stevenson's one on one. It did um eighty dollars. You guys can see one on one. Right there. So one on one printing plate, which is kind of cool the way they did their printing plate. So the back's a card and the front's your plate. It's the sock version, rookie. Auto Ellie De La Cruz. So I asked on Discord what people thought price value was. I think we were around everybody in Discord is like three to five hundred. I had some buddies in the group chat. They were all guessing five to eight hundred onto it. So let me know what you guys think off. I know it's Panini Baseball, but there's only one up for sale at two thousand dollars. Ridiculous. I was looking at what his nine nine ones were doing. Other sock cards were like around a hundred bucks. I think the one out of ten, it wasn't a sock, but it was like a laundry tag, did two thirty. So what do you think? Five hundred maybe? Four hundred? I don't know. You guys tell me. I'm trying to get an overall concession on what you guys think this is worth. Um I usually don't ask 
the audience or the chat or the video or people watching what they think of it. But I'm just curious if you had to put a price value on it, it was your card, what would you think offhand? I mean, my guess offhand was 2000 was way too much. I figure it's probably going to be a quarter of that price, around 500 But curious to what everybody says. Somebody else might have some more knowledge on this than me, other than he's a huge prospect out here in Cincinnati. So be able to move this at one of the shows that are local out here, try to swap it out or something. But look at just basically, I was like, maybe it was the wrong guy. I thought he played for the Reds. That's how bad it was. I'm like, I'll take it. If you think it's worth 100 what the heck? I'll take a gamble on it. Hopefully, $100, PSA 9, gold wave from T-Mall, non-numbered, Halliburton rookie, um, was well worth the trade on this. You guys, like I said, you guys let me know on it. All right, that was it for that. Again, show was really, really good up there. Uh, I, the only trend I could tell you is what was for my table and Chad's. If you had stuff that guys don't regularly see on a regular basis, they were interested. Oh, were they interested? Uh, aside from vintage. And, you know, like a PSA 10 Griffey Upper Deck or something like that. If you had stuff that was numbered, relics, autographs, they loved it. Vintage, loved it. Uh, stuff that they don't normally see at the show, loved it. So it was a really, really good experience. Really good. Very good on how the promoter promotes it on Facebook and Instagram and everything. I like how he does his video on the show and everything. It was something different I have not seen. And for being a small show, and by small, I mean it's not 100 tables and stuff like that, or like a huge show, to keep that amount of people coming through. And what was even great is I saw so many people, 40 or 50, whatever age you want to say, and up in there, it, it was great. To be able to sit there and talk about older stuff and, you know, not have that deer in headlights look and be able to have educated conversations was great. It was just great. Great experience up there. I know I said it a lot, but I, I mean, no pun intended when I say it's extremely happy with the way that show is up there. If I live closer to that, I would beg for going up to there on a monthly basis because the atmosphere is good. The crowd coming in was good. The dealers I spoke to, very respectful. Um, gain knowledge from them. They gain knowledge from you type deal. So, pretty good overall. If you guys are ever in that area, check it out. Other than that, I've been blabbing a little bit too much. I know I'm tired. I'm out. Catch you guys in another video.